Hey guys. Um, I made it. Second week in a row. We're doing well. Um, I thought I would take today to talk about things that relieve my stress, like I had said I would do. So I brought a few things. I brought some of the bags I made that I knit on my loom. I also brought my little squishies. Because they're really cute and I wanted to share them. I got these at Walmart for like a dollar. They were and they're really you know, good quality and whatever, but they they're like in these little um they have plushy fur <laughs> over around the squishy thing and I thought that was the world's coolest thing ever, so I bought me some and I take these with me when I go anywhere. I have to go like therapy or to the doctor or anything like that because they, they actually give me something to do so that I'm not just spiraling because part of anxiety is like your brain starts going into these spiral thoughts. And, um, but yeah, these, these, they're very soft and mostly slow rising, <laughs> but I like, I don't know, I, for Walmart they are amazing quality. So I brought those to share, cause one, they're cute, but I brought out some of the bags I've made, cause, um, I have several types of looms. I have a long rectangle, a short rectangle, and uh, four circles in various sizes. And um, the circles are fa fairly new to me <clears throat> right now. Um, I'm getting acquainted with them. I made one beanie and it I don't think it turned out all that great, but my girlfriend absolutely loves it and wears it. She she actually wears it, so I guess it turned out better than I thought, but I think I could do better, so I'm gonna be practicing on that. Um, I also made one of these bags using the round loom, so, and I'm ec ecstatic by how this bag turned out. This bag's actually, um, something I use, and I made a little backpack, and I've been, I've been using it. I don't normally carry a bag, I just, if it doesn't fit in my pockets, I usually say I don't need it, but these little guys don't fit in my pockets, so it's been really handy to have something that I can, you know, use to bring them with me, plus I can put things like anything I'm knitting can go in here that I can take with me wherever I, I go so that I can, um, have other things that distract me, like the knitting. Uh, but yeah, I actually really like this. I'm thinking about adding, like, pockets on the inside and stuff. And this one, it doesn't have, like, an inner lining or anything. It's just the knit itself, which I'm hoping is going to work out well, because I, um, I've been testing it, like, a lot with like heavy objects and shaking it around and pulling at it and stuff to see if it'll break and so far it's been totally holding up very well for for my lifestyle <laughs> my lifestyle of hardcore heavy lifting I guess but I'm proud of how it turned out so and here's um this is a cross shoulder uh satchel bag that I made this one does have a lining that I put on the inside as well, just for a little extra reinforcement. It's not all the way through on the inside. There's parts that don't have it, like where the pocket is, and but nothing is going to be on there that's like heavy or anything like that. So I have the lining along the bottom. Um, and I like how it turned out too. I've used it a couple times as well. I need to fix some aspects because it's not... 100%, but it's holding up actually pretty well for a first bag. This is the first bag I ever made. So, it's holding up quite well for a first bag. I just need to do a little bit of maintenance on it. And I have, like, been given this little zipper pouch that I have in it, too, just 
the little zipper pouch I can move to any bag I need to like move it to and stuff which is nice because it's handy for like little things that could probably fall out from between the little uh, holes of the knitting and then I have this one that I was commissioned to make for a friend and it's bigger than the other ones I just need to add the strap after that it's done but it also does not have a lining at this moment um I need to ask the customer that it's for if he wants one or not um you know for like extra security or anything like that and this one also has a button because the uh this part keeps rolling up so I got it I gave it a button to help secure and keep it down but I wanted to share those um because I'm actually quite happy with how they turned out actually this especially this one this one has broken a tool broken a loom and like has been a very much a thorn in my side <laughs> trying to get done and that's because I added hemp cord into it to make it a little bit stronger and sturdier um but I don't think I'm ever going to do that again because that was a nightmare trying to work with it because hemp isn't a thread it doesn't give it's not a yarn <laughs> so in case you didn't know and it, it was really stiff and really difficult to work with though the bag turned out awesome regardless but um I've never yeah that's never happening again unless I get like triple the pay probably not triple but like more more money so I can replace all the tools it breaks trying to get it done but I'm very proud of how it turned out it turned out amazing on top of that, I also make blankets, scarves, um, anything rectangular, <laughs> and like, I'm hoping to expand to more, more things, which is why I was doing the bags. The bags, it's the first time I ever did bags, because I used to only knit scarves. I have a hundred scarves, still trying to sell any number of them, so if you want a scarf, let me know, because I got, I got scarves for days, but, um, I want... I wanted to try and do more things, so I started blankets on my needles, but the blankets don't turn out as thick as I would like, like, as wide. They're kind of narrow, which is fine for, like, one person, but at the same time, like, if I am moving around a lot, like, if I shift weight or something, then the blanket comes up with me and I have to put it back, because it's, it's very thin. It's not, it's not as wide as I would like. It's long. I made mine too long. I made mine way too long by accident, and, like... <laughs> I'm thinking of adding a border so that I can make it wider, but uh, it didn't turn out as wide as I was hoping. But I've gotten an idea for how to do a patch looking one using the looms where I like do little squares and then like eventually connect all the squares together and have a blanket that way. I want to see how long that takes and how that works out. But I'm just, I've been challenging myself to learn new stitches on the loom because the loom is a little different than the needles. It's faster and it's a lot easier to do different kinds of stitches because I have a hard time. With... I've been knitting on needles since I was maybe nine or even earlier. I, I don't know. My memory is shot. But um, I was been knitting on it for, for a long, long time, for years. And I still, for the life of me, cannot do purl stitch. Still can't do it. I've gone through every tutorial I've gone through every person coming and showing me physically how to do it I've gone through like every possible way of trying to work out how to purl stitch and I still cannot do that stitch and I don't know why and I never did learn to crochet which I hear is also a little easier um for like doing different stitches and stuff. I never did pick that one up though. Like I've practiced with it a little bit, but I want to extend to doing that more often too. But on the loom, when you're doing different stitches, you're just, you're connecting it to different pegs and stuff. And that's so much easier to like work out because this I believe is what purl stitch is supposed to look like. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I get these like messed around, but on the loom, when you're doing a regular stitch, you get this on one side and you get the knit on the other side. And that's just how it uh, comes out. Which, um, so it's like the first time I've ever actually had anything with this, 
the triangles on it, the little triangles on it, because everything else I ever knit only comes out in knit stitch. So, so it's been interesting to see different kinds of things, and I've learned, like, a different one that goes across them instead of around them, which won't make sense if you don't use a loom already. <laughs> but they, they have an easier beginner kind of aspect. Like, you can just look at the picture and kind of go, oh, okay, and then pick it up really easy, where... As with knitting, at least for me, when it's like, and then you need to drop this stitch, pick up that stitch, do that. It gets, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> like, I don't know what they're showing me. I don't know what's going on. I just know <laughs> that, that I find the loom a lot easier. So I've been challenging myself with different kinds of knit patterns or stitches um, on my loom. And I'm obsessed with this one that I found. I don't know what it would be called, but... You go, you twist around each one, and it's like, you do sort of a figure eight around them, and, and I'm, like, obsessed with that. So I've made, like, several scarves in that, in that stitch, and I'm, I'm loving how they're turning out, because they're, to thicken it up, I would have to use thicker yarn, but I'm using normal, like, regular gauged yarn for that, and, like... So the holes are coming out kind of loose, and I just, I really like how it looks. I like how that ended up looking in comparison to this where it's very tight, which you would want for a bag, but but I, I like I like the looser look on the, on the scarves. I think it looks really nice. Now, I didn't bring any of those out, so maybe I'll show those next time and just let you guys see the different things I've made. I've, if we go through my scarves, it'll be forever. I've done fandom scarves, so I had... I've done Slytherin, I've done Hufflepuff, I've done, like, my friend Bailey still has the Hufflepuff scarf and uses it regularly. She says it's her favorite scarf. I did uh, the Fourth Doctor's scarf, which, let me tell you, was an ordeal. I did that on needles, I did, and it took a year to do, and it was 24 feet long, and I'm very proud of how that turned out. I don't have that to show you, because my friend Steven has that, but it was, it was such a project. I've done um, two different kinds of Loki-inspired scarves. I've done a Thor. I've done Bucky Barnes. I've done Iron Man. And it's just, it's in their color. It's just stripes, but in their colors and stuff. And, and they turned out really well. There's one gray one I did that I got inspired from a Tom Hiddleston movie. I don't remember the name, but I liked the scarf. I intend to do the scarf that John Watson wears in the Sherlock Holmes movies because I really like the brown, white, and blue of that scarf. I like it a lot, so I want to do that one. Um, but yeah, I, I do I do like <laughs> theme scarves, so I have so many scarves that are just random themes. And then I have some plain ones that I just, the, I like the color. So one one of them that I'm trying to sell, I did put on my it, Etsy shop, um, is like a blue oceany color. And it's it's one of those yarns that go, go from one color to the next. Like they just, the string just comes in into new colors on its own and stuff, which is my favorite yarn, favorite yarn. That's what I used for this. It was like a watermelon uh, yarn, and then I added a silver blue and a, this reddish mauve color, purpley color. But, um, I like those, those types of yarns the most because you don't always know exactly what pattern you're gonna end up with, and I think that makes it more exciting for me, and I like the looks in the end a lot more because it's something unique, because depending on which part of the yarn you've used, depends on how this scarf's pattern lays out compared to the next scarf of that same yarn. And and I like that they're, like, unique. Each one is different, and that makes me, I don't know, it makes me more excited to, to knit. I get more excited when I see new colors of those kind of ones come out, like the ombre ones and all of that. And I get so excited to see the new ones come out for the seasons because a little-known fact, yarn colors are also seasonal like clothing colors are. And the only reason I know about the clothing colors one is because I used to work in the um, clothing department at Walmart. I used to work in the clothing department. And while working there, uh, you rotate through the seasons. And, like, spring has brighter colors and pastel colors. And fall has more oranges, muted, more muted colors, more grays. 
winter has a lot of blues and you know etc like each season has its own colors well yarn does the same thing during fall it has more oranges more browns more fall colors and then during spring you get more easter colors during <laughs> during christmas you have a lot more holiday colors like they do the same thing so i get excited going to the store just to look at what colors have come out for this season and if any more of the mixed yarn cut bundles have come out like if anything new in the mixed bundles come out and it just that makes me excited so that's something that's what i do for de-stressing and i hope to sell most of those things and use it as well as a type of job like as an artisan job because i do a lot of crafting i make bracelets i make scarves i make soaps i make all kinds of things that little little dolls and all of that and i'd like i'd like for my hobby to also be something that provides an income that's that's my biggest hope but it's all about marketing of course and it takes it takes time to build up any sort of marketing for that and finding the right places to sell the right things and and all of that but um that's something that i hope to do because because the netting makes me so happy because taking the time to do that makes me so happy and it's nice to have stuff there that exists that that can be calming and that can be relaxing when you have high stress disorders and anxiety and all of that stuff it um it gives us something to do something to focus on instead of the horrible what if spiral thoughts and if you don't know what a what if spiral thought it's more like it it's what i call when your brain goes well what if i did this well what if that happened because i did this well what if that happened because that happened because i did this what if and then i go into a spiral of ridiculousness to the point of what if then that means aliens attack and then what if the aliens attack because i did this and then it become it becomes just this mess this absolute mess um but so that's what i call the spiral the what if spiral and and it's nice to have something i'm doing instead of spiraling because i'm just like okay when i get this done it's gonna look like this and then when i get that done i can start this project that i have an idea for and then i can start that project that i have an idea for oh but what about if i do this would that do something different and then like that's what i spend the time doing is getting creative ideas on more ways to make bags on more ways to make blankets on more ways to make all kinds of things because maybe i can i have pet blankets i've made i could i could start making pillows and if i make pillows then i can make pet beds if i make pet beds you know and it continues of what my what if spiral turns into what if this great idea what about this idea what about that idea instead of what if i fail <laughs> so so it's nice because it gives me something that i look forward to something i like doing something that i enjoy so i want anyone that watches this i want today's comments to be full of things you do that are inspiring, that are uplifting, that are de-stressing, like do you take a hot bath? And in the hot bath, do you stop those spiral thoughts? Do you go into, man, this is relaxing. What if I play this music instead? Maybe that'll make it more relaxing. And you think of more positive what-if scenarios instead of zillions of negative what-if scenarios about aliens attacking, which <laughs> is obviously ridiculous, because it can get to being that bad where your brain is telling you something that's completely off the wall. Something completely, like walking down the aisle at the store and you're going, what if that flew off and hit me in the head? Like, it's, it doesn't, it's not going to, it's on the shelf. It's not going to just get up and then smack you in the face. But what if it did? <laughs> then what would I do? And it just, to go through life where every second of your day is going, what if this catastrophic event takes place what if that catastrophic event takes place is not a healthy way to live so i want to know everybody's way of getting out of those thoughts that's what i want for today's uh comment challenge that's what i'm gonna start calling them comment challenges i challenge you to tell me what you do to stop the spiral thoughts and that will be how i'm gonna end this video today so please please comment and like and subscribe if you haven't already um, I love to hear from you. I do check them. I do uh, put all my social media handles in the description box below. 
I want to hear from you. I want us to connect. I want to make a family here on YouTube of people that connect in this way. I want I want normal people too. I want people that are like, oh, and then they're learning something about it and like learning ways to to help in this community too. I want I want to connect like a family. Um so that more of us realize we're not alone. We're not alone in this struggle. We're not alone in this battle. That there's some com camaraderie <laughs> amongst humanity. Again, I need that. I need to know that there are people that don't live in just hatred and, and want to hurt and be bullying and be mean to other people. I want, I want to know that there's love still out there. So I'm going to leave the video here. Comment, like, subscribe. Share the love, spread the love, share this video, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, so, bye guys. <laughs>